a gruesome house, a hostile neighborhood, a new owner with a shocking secret. Welcome to Blackwood House. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. To my viewers, my subscribers, thank you guys so much. It means so much to me that you're able to take a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means more to me than I can ever let you know. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're new to my channel, thanks so much for joining. I really, really appreciate you. And if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, I hope you take a quick second hit that little subscribe button over there. I would love for you to join us for future videos. Your comments, of course, are always welcome, and I hope you give this video a thumbs up. So today we are doing our September Book of the Month Club, and I think I like doing these the way I've, I've been doing these the last few times, where I take a break in between each book, and that's just kind of giving me a chance to catch my breath and maybe take a five, ten minute break. So um, if it's choppy because of that, I do apologize. But I am really loving the Book of the Month Club. I am just frustrated that I'm being stupid, I guess, and just not taking that time to relax at the end of every night. And I hope, hope to get back into doing that this week. There are some books that I bought last year that I wanted to read for the upcoming October. It's a series of four books on the Practical Magic series. So I'm hoping I can finish the book I started a couple of months ago. And uh, and I just kind of get that done so that I can do that October series. I think that'll be really fun for October. But that said, for the Book of the Month Club, um, they pick different genres for you. Um, and so it could be like historical fiction, could be romance, contemporary fictions. It could be like fantasy books, gothic books, thrillers, horror stories, mysteries, just all kinds of books. So they usually pick out five books for you. Every now and then they pick out, pick out like seven books the month for you to choose from and you get to choose one of those books. The cost is $15.99. Shipping is included with that. If you go right to their website, I believe it's $9.99 to get your first book. If you use my link or if you have a friend, a family member that's also a member of the Book of the Month Club, if you use their link, I believe it should be $5 for your first book and who's ever link you use gets a free book, which is really fun. Every now and then when someone uses your link and you go to check out and it's like, ooh, I have a free book waiting for me. That is as much fun as friend mail sometimes, just especially if you're stuck between two books. It's really fun. You get a free book for your birthday month. And then last year, um, I got to choose between the finalists, the book of the year that the voters, the readers, the users, the subscribers of this uh, Book of the Month Club had picked for their top books of the year. And then, of course, they picked out the finalists, the book of the year. And because I've been in this for a while, I did get to pick out a free finalist for the year. And I was so excited because I hadn't picked any of those books uh, during the year. So for me, it was really fun to be able to get that free book. Alrighty, so that said, um, and I like the way that I've been doing these uh, the last few months is that I just kind of show the book cover and then I tell you a little bit about it and then I take a break, which sometimes the break is only just enough to switch the picture up and start again. But with my voice kind of coming and going, I think I'm going to enjoy doing it this way so that I can take a five, ten minute break in between each book. So anyway, for this month, we had five different choices. We had a legal thriller. I haven't read a legal thriller since I was really into the John Grissom books when they first came out. Love those series. So excited to see what kind of legal thriller is in for this month. We had a romance. We had a contemporary fiction, a historical fiction, which I think eventually I would like to start getting into some of those. And then we also had a thriller. Can you tell which one I picked? Alrighty, so let's do the first book. And that was The Intern, and that was The Legal Thriller. And it was by Michelle Campbell. 
So the quick take on this book is this tense struggle between a crooked judge and her intern will amp your pulse and have you looking over your shoulder. Good thing I have the thing looking over my shoulder. Madison Rivera lands the internship of a lifetime working for Judge Catherine Conroy. But Madison has a secret that could destroy her career. Her troubled younger brother Danny has been arrested and Conroy is the judge on this case. When Danny goes missing after accusing the judge of corruption, Madison's quest for answers brings her deep into the judge's glamorous world. Is Catherine Conroy a mentor, a victim, or a criminal? Is she trying to help Madison or use her as a pawn? And why is somebody trying to kill her? As the two women circle each other in this dangerous cat and mouse game, will they save each other or will betrayal leave one of them dead? Our next choice is a contemporary fiction called Evil Eye by Etaf Rum. So brace yourself to feel all the fields in this meditative look at a Palestine American woman confronting her past. Raised in a conservative and emotionally volatile Palestine family in Brooklyn, Yara thought she would finally feel free when she married a charming entrepreneur who took her to the suburbs. She's gotten to follow her dreams, completing an undergraduate degree in art and landing a job at a local college. As a traditional wife, she also raises their two school-age daughters, takes care of the house, and has dinner ready when her husband comes home. With her family balanced, with her professional ambitions, Yara knows that her life is infinitely more rewarding than her own mother's. So why does she feel like it's not enough? After her dream of chaperoning a student trip to Europe evaporates and she responds to a colleague's racist provocation, Yara is put on probation at work and must attend mandatory counseling to keep her position. Her mother blames a family curse for the trouble she's facing. And while Yara doesn't really believe in old superstitions, she still finds herself growing increasingly uneasy with her mother's warning and the possibility of falling victim to the same mistakes. Shaken to the core by these indictments of her life, Yara finds her carefully constructed world beginning to implode. To save herself, Yara must reckon with the reality of the difficulties of the childhood she thought she left behind have very real and damaging implications, just not on her own future, but that of her daughters. And our next choice is a romance. You Again by Kate Goldbeck. Let your faith be renewed by a commitment phobe and hopeless romantic who go from enemies to friends to lovers. When Ari and Josh first meet, the wrong kind of sparks fly. They hate each other instantly. A free-spirited, struggling comedian who likes to keep things casual, Ari sublets, takes gigs, and she never sleeps over after hooking up. Born and bred Manhattan night, Josh has ambitious plans. Take the culinary world by storm. Find the one and make her breakfast in his spotless kitchen. They have absolutely nothing, nothing in common, except that they happen to be sleeping with the same woman. Ari and Josh never expect their paths to cross again. But years later, as they're both reeling from ego-bruising breakups, a chance encounter 
leads to a surprising connection, friendship. Turns out spending time with your former nemesis is fun. You're too sad to hate each other and too sad for hate sex. As friends without benefits, they find comfort in late night Netflix binges, swiping through each other's online dating profiles and bickering across the burrows. It's better than romance until one night, the unspoken boundaries of their platonic relationship begin to blur. Our next one is a historical fiction, The River We Remember by William Kent Kruger. A town grapples with the mysteries of man and nature in this moving portrait of a community reeling from its World War II wounds. On Memorial Day, the people of Jewel, Minnesota gather to remember and honor the sacrifice of so many sons on the wars of the past, the half-clothed body of wealthy landowner Jimmy Quinn is found floating in the Alabaster River, dead from a shotgun blast. Investigation of the murder falls to Sheriff Brody Dern, a highly decorated war hero who still carries the physical and emotional scars from his military service. Even before Dern has the results of the autopsy, vicious rumors begin to circulate that the killer must be Noah Bloomstone, a Native American World War II veteran who was recently returned to Jewel with a Japanese wife. A suspicious and accusational mount in the town, tweeters on the edge of more violence. Dern struggles not only to find the truth of Quinn's murder, but also put to rest the demons from his own past. Caught up in the torrent of anger that sweeps through Jewel are a war widow and her adolescent son. The intrepid publisher of the local newspaper, an aging deputy, and a crusading female lawyer, all of whom struggle with their own tragic histories and harbor secrets of Quinn's death threatens to expose. Both a complex spellbinding mystery and a masterful portrait of mid-century American life, the river we remember is an unflinching look at the wounds left by the wars we fight abroad and at home, a moving exploration of the ways in which we seek to heal and a testament to the enduring power of the stories we tell about the places we call home. Now this one really sounds interesting too and I would like to get into some historical fiction and now that I live in Minnesota a story about this really has me interested so this may end up being a future book of mine. Alrighty, and now for the one I chose. I chose Thriller, The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa Matlin. Alrighty, so this sounds really good too. So, misleading omens and untrustworthy untr figures abound in this chilling tale about a couple who move into a murder house. Sarah Slade is starting over as the new owner of the infamous Blackwood House, the scene of a grisly murder-suicide. She's determined that this fixer-upper will help reach a new audience of her successful lifestyle blog and distract her from her failing marriage. But as Sarah paints over the house's horrifying past, she knows better than anyone that a new facade can't conceal every secret. Then the builders start acting erratically and experiencing bizarre accidents. And Sarah knows there's only so long that she can continue to sleep in the bedroom with the blood-stained floor and suffer 
the mysterious footsteps that she hears from the attic. When menacing notes start appearing everywhere, Sarah becomes convinced that someone or something is out to kill her. Her husband, her neighbors, maybe even the house itself. The more she remodels Blackwood House, the angrier it becomes. With every passing moment, Sarah's life spirals further out of control and with it, her sense of reality. Though she desperately clings to the lies she's crafted to conceal her own secrets, Sarah Slade must wonder, was it all worth it? Or will this house be her final unraveling? Alrighty, so those were some pretty awesome choices this month. So after listening to these ones, which one would you like to read? Or, or which, if you are in the Book of the Month Club, which one did you choose? They were all really good. Of course, you know, I'm always drawn to the thrillers, even though I'm really slow at reading. I was good for a while. I was really good at shutting off my computer, the laptop, the TV at 1130 and just trying to read an hour or two before I went to bed. I was really good at that. Then I moved it to like 1230. Then I changed it to one and then 130. And when you start reading at 130, after if you've worked 12, 14 hour days, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna be awake for long. And lately I've been coloring to do part of that collab that I've been trying to do a little bit better at. So I think I need to try to find that balance and try to do some more reading. I really want to do those four books of the Practical Magic series in October. But I started reading a few months ago and I think I'm maybe fifty pages in. She started it. And that one that one just sounds so good. I can't wait to get into it. I think tonight I'm going to make myself stop reading, stop with the electronics and start reading again. I miss it so much. Reading, it just really engages your mind a little bit more than maybe just being entertained by a TV show. Though I do enjoy so much trying to catch up on YouTube and watch everybody's videos that, you know, subscribes to me and comments to me. And yeah, I really want to get caught up, but I really need to get back into reading. I kind of need that kind of motivation and keep my brain active. So hoping, hoping this is the week I start. So anyway, the legal thriller, you know, I really, really enjoyed the John Grissom books of the past. That one really sounded like a good book. The, actually the, um, the next one, the You Do Again, I mean, that one kind of interested me too, and I'm really not into romance books these days, but the one I'm really interested in is if you got this book, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. I might try to Google this just to see what I can find out on Jewel, Minnesota, and just maybe just how this is relevant and, and, you know, this, this book just really sounds really good. I think I really want to get into, as much as I love my thrillers and my, my mysteries, I think I really want to get into some historical fictions and things like that too. So anyway, those were that, these month's choices. Again, I would love to hear your thoughts on them. And other than that, I hope everyone goes out, has a fabulous, fabulous week. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. Be kind. Be happy. Enjoy life have some fun. Love you guys so much, and we will see you in our next video. Bye-bye.